Um, I, I asked the uh, organizers permission to do this. I'm going to begin very briefly with a, sh with a shameless plug since I'm not giving a talk. Um, uh, and okay, so I'm from Case Western Reserve University. Actually, two shameless plugs. Um, people have forgotten this, but in 19, early 1960s, Mike Mazarovich, who was in the Systems and Engineering Program at uh, uh, Case Western Reserve, organized a conference about applying principles of systems engineering to biological systems, and he coined the phrase systems biology at that conference. You can find it in the proceedings. So my university gets to claim credit for having invented the phrase systems biology. Um, uh, and we're, we're going strong with systems and engineering. I'm in the mathematics department there, but I interact a lot with biologists and, and people in systems. Um, right, we did not spend any time on naming our group. Um, the other shameless plug, and uh, again, I got the organizer's permission to, uh, to do this, whoops, is to mention that as the um, co-editor-in-chief of Biological Cybernetics, I want to bring your attention to a special issue that we are organizing with a July 1st, 2020 deadline on information theory and thermodynamics in biology. Uh, this is associated with a, um, a BANF uh, workshop. Uh, BANF participation in BANF workshops is limited to 42 people, so I couldn't invite all of you because there's more than 42 people in this room. Um, and actually it's mostly subscribed already. But if you have a burning interest, we have a couple of spots left. You can submit to the special issue even if you are not participating in the, uh, in the workshop. The workshop is on the same topic. Um, and I'll just point out that this, this journal, there was a call uh, yesterday, Max mentioned, for, for finding maybe a joint project between two journals from the two different communities. This journal, which was founded, co-founded by Norbert Wiener in the 1960s, who in, Norbert Wiener coined the term cybernetics. Um, uh, this already is the journal that bridges these communities, and it has done so uh, for, for many years and continues to be an excellent place to publish in this area. We are expanding the scope um, from just computational neuroscience, which was a focus the last couple of decades, to systems in biology, uh, information theory and control theory and so on, um, both in neuroscience but also in cell biology. So um, something you can consider. How do I get back to where I'm supposed to be? Okay, so we were hard at work. Um, here's the rest of my talk. Um, so we, we, we tried to follow the directions. You'll see we edited the, um, the original question, is this on, uh, was about referred to, whoa, that's not good, <laughs> was referring to the ITC model, that's even worse, so this thing is not to be touched, all right. Well, just, if you just want to point. Oh, good. Just kill the kill the little USB plug. Thank you. And I'll try to point that in your eyes. So um, the IT, ICCT model, we immediately tripped over ourselves uh, arguing about what model is, is this the referring to. So we first made the edit to cross out the, the the and refer to ICCT models, plural. And later on, I don't know how many of you are... Um, familiar with the state of the art in mathematical oncology, but what people do there nowadays is they don't talk about finding an equation that describes tumor progression. Rather, every patient deserves her own equation. And the first step in treatment and diagnosis is system identification because then you, you find uh, you can use mathematically driven treatments. Um, each biological system deserves its own ICCT model was one suggestion that arose from our group. Not that there was unanimous agreement, um, but we felt that uh, an important aspect was the diversity. So I have just two slides that summarize the concepts that we came up with. Uh, this is the first point. Nobody knows what is the ICCT model. Um, there were examples offered. Um, if you have a linear additive Gaussian stationary channel, then you're, you're in luck, and because uh, we know how to analyze those. Uh, most of the interesting things happening in biology turn out not to be in that class, and so that's where uh, we all do research in different directions. We will try not to get bogged down by having a substantive discussion, I'm afraid. Otherwise, it will be more than five minutes. Um, it's probably already more than five minutes. Some examples, uh, people brought up voltage in a wire. Um, uh, some biochemical examples that, that you can think of in this uh, high-dimensional Gaussian context. Um, how many of you knew that plants use action potentials to communicate and coordinate responses from one part of the plant to another? 
only a handful. This is astonishing. I, I've worked in computational neuroscience for 25 years, and I only recently learned that, that plants are doing this too. So, um, uh, so one of our group members is working actively in that area, um, looking at channel, channel models there. Um, we talked in various ways about the, um, the problem of semantics as the great lacuna in, in the uh, original syntactically grounded formulation of information theory. And that, that takes various forms, task, context, fitness value of information. There were some fundamental dichotomies our group uh, noted. For instance, um, some of us think about uh, information theory framework as useful for communication models. Some of us think uh, in terms of uh, uh, state selection in the presence of noise. So for instance, uh, the, the talk that Tom gave on the first day uh, where he mentioned um, the restriction enzyme binding to DNA, it, it's kind of, you have to turn your, tie yourself in knots to think about that as a, as a sender and a receiver, but that doesn't mean you can't use the, the information theory framework to analyze it. Um, some other fundamental dichotomies or ambiguities, given a particular biological system, how do you decide what part of it is the signal and what part is the rest of the system? Um, the signal and the system are often intertwined. Uh, people pointed out that there isn't really a general model that fits every case. Um, the kind of model you choose might depend on the scale uh, at which you are asking questions. Um, for instance, in molecular communication, the signals are probably not, uh, they're not Gaussian, they're discrete, the, the noise is Poisson. Um, uh, Decision-making versus communication as two different paradigms. Uh, we talked about the, the um, you know, the role of Zweckmäßigkeit, uh, uh, the purposiveness, what is the, or the teleological, teleological explanations that, that if you read Shannon or you read Cover and Thomas, you know, there's a sender that intends to send a message to the receiver. Without that intention, you can't really construct and make sense of, of, of the channel you're looking at. And so we impose that uh, intentionality on systems when we, when we look at them from the outside. And um, that's an important thing to recognize. Um, and some people in our group are using uh, uh, this framework not to study communication, but to study, just to quantify the, the departure from randomness as systems develop, say, morphological systems. That's it. Next group should come on up. <laughs>